Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2021-22 season. My name is Dan and this is the final team selection video of this season. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying this. We've done 38 of these across the season. This is the last one. We've done one every week. It's really quite crazy that we're here, guys, if I'm completely honest. And uh, to be fair, I'm kind of looking forward to a little bit of a break from FPL as it has been pretty exhausting. Uh, let me tell you that, guys. So, uh, guys, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like for the final time uh, this season. Please do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And for those of you wondering what I'm going to be doing in the off season, there is still going to be FPL related content if you are if you are interested in that kind of stuff. So don't worry, there's still going to be stuff on this channel. Probably not as many videos as I'm doing at the moment, but there'll still be a lot of stuff. So hopefully you guys are, are, are gonna, some of you guys are going to stick around for that, and we'll try and do some interesting videos uh, around FPL, around football in general, and, and you'll like that one. But guys, you're not here to hear about the summer plans you're here to see my scores from game week 37 primarily and maybe my team selection for game week 38 so uh, i suppose let's do that Okay, so um, this I'm hoping is going to make you guys feel a little bit better about whatever scores you got in game week 37 because for me, it was one of those game weeks, I'm sure you guys know about these kind of game weeks, where everything that possibly could go wrong went wrong. Um, it really was a, a tragic, tragic game week. Now, thankfully, um, I've had more, uh, not not that many of these game weeks this season. And I have to kind of say, you know, look, maybe my luck has run out. Maybe I, my my high ride on variance has, has, you know, exhausted itself. And we're going back to, well, you know, well, you know it's, it's averaging itself out a little bit with some, some horrible red arrows. Uh, but it is, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, guys, like I say, I mean, if you scored more than 51 points, which I imagine most of you did, um, uh, you've done a lot better than me, let me tell you that. So let's uh, let's kind of talk about what went wrong. Well, Schmeichel didn't start in the first game, which was a problem. Cancelo got his clean sheet wiped out and, and ended up scoring one point and two goals conceded, which is very unexpected. Cash managed no clean sheets and, uh, and no attacking returns in what looked like two good games. Dan Byrne got one of my three... It was one of my three players with, with a return full stop this game week. So thanks, Dan Byrne. Although that did uh, unfortunately come at the cost of, of Arsenal now not... Yeah, you know, not really got a chance to top four anymore. So, you know, that's bittersweet. The captaincy on Son failed, you know, three-pointer blank. And it was just insane because in that game, Son should have scored two goals minimum in that game. Um... You know, the, the, the goalkeeper Pope had an absolute worldy game and, and pulled up of two insane saves um, for Son's two uh, big chances to score. So, felt a little bit hard done by then. Uh, Mount didn't play. Zaha got one assist over two games and got a yellow card. Um, Saka got nothing. Kulisewski was benched, then came off the bench and got a yellow card. Danny Ings only played, well, only started one of the two games and didn't get any returns when we really expected him to. And Richarlison, who was my only, like, good scoring player that I had, scored 19 points. Amazing. But the problem was he is so highly owned and so highly captained around my rank that I actually lost rank because of Richarlison hauling. It would have been better for me if Richarlison scored like a zero pointer. That would actually have been more beneficial to me. So it all went terribly wrong. Trent, Robertson, both of those players who were originally starting in my team were, you know, well, Trent not even in the squad, Robertson on the bench. Um, that went that went awfully there as well. And as for my transfers and captaincies decisions, it just, it just wasn't the one. You know, I, I ended up deciding to go for Zaha. It was between Zaha and Madison. I wasn't sure who to go for. I ended up going for Zaha with a bit of FOMO. Madison ended up having an absolute crazy haul. So, you know, that 50-50 decision, very much lost out on that one. Um, I had a, a decision to make Ings versus Vardy or maybe Kane. Ings out of the three players, the only one to blank. You know, Vardy would have been very nice to have. As, uh, you know, Kane would have been very nice to have as well. But because I ended up going for Ings out of those three, I ended up getting another blank. And then I had my captaincy decision. It was, uh, you know, Son versus Richarlison versus, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I guess Ings and Cash as well, probably thrown in there. But Richarlison was my second favourite captain. Um, I ended up going for Son, but had I gone for Richarlison instead um, as my vice captain, it's currently on the vice captain. So, um, you know, that would have been a much, much 
better game week. So, like I say, guys, it was one of those game weeks where everything went wrong, and I'm just kind of looking forward to the end of the season. I've had my fun this season. Whatever happens now, um, I'm going to get a great rank, and I'm going to look back at this season at, with such, you know, with such fond eyes. I've had an absolutely amazing run. So, uh, I'm certainly not feeling sorry for myself. I have absolutely no right to feel sorry for myself. It's a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. Um, but I guess the pressure's off now. I can go forward and make some fun transfers and pretty much do whatever I like in game week 38 because really to me the difference between the a rank of 290th and like you know 999th there's no difference I'm pretty much I don't want to say guaranteed but because I you know judging by the last couple of game weeks for me things can go wrong very very easily um even when you it looks like you've got a good team but yeah I mean it would be very unlikely for me to finish outside the top 1k now even if I do go absolutely crazy with some moves I think the only way I finish out, outside the top 1k is if I take like a minus 12 and all of them go wrong that's probably the only way that that's going to happen so you know, I could just have some fun in game week 38, I suppose. All right, speaking of game week 38, we've got uh, one free transfer, but we've got a nice amount of money in the bank. We've got 4.4 million in the bank, so we've got plenty of uh, room to upgrade here. And uh, before I go any further, guys, I do want to say that this team is definitely nowhere near final. We're going to have lots of team news um, on the day, and that is going to impact so many decisions. So I'm certainly not going to be, be making any transfers early. I'm certainly not going to be finalizing anything early. I'll leave everything to, to as late as physically possible um, because I, I'm, I'm expecting to hear a little bit of team news trickling in and that's going to change so much but I can still present to you a bus team a, a team that you know if I was hit by a bus today I think this team would do pretty well in game week 38 but like I say keep your ears to the walls guys a lot of uh, things can change in the next kind of 48 hours but Let's uh, start off in goal with uh, Schmeichel. He plays Southampton at home, so a pretty decent fixture there. I kind of got the choice between Schmeichel and Ramsdale, who plays Everton. But Arsenal are just not key keeping any clean sheets at all at the moment. They're not even looking likely to keep clean sheets. So it kind of seems a little bit pointless um, going for Ramsdale when he's just conceding at least a goal every single game. So Schmeichel, a little bit better um, recently. And he's making a lot of saves as well, which is nice to see. Uh, Southampton at home, you would say, is a pretty good game. And depending on how less to shape up in the final game. I don't know how, if they're going to play a strong team, a weak team. I don't really know. But what I do know is that Schmeichel is going to be playing because uh, Brendan Rodgers has already come out and said Schmeichel is going to play the final two games of the season. The first of those two games was yesterday and today, uh, on Sunday that will be the final game of the season. So we know we've got a Schmeichel start which is very very good information to have. Moving on into defence we have got Trent Alexander-Arnold at home against Wolves. Massive game for, uh, for Liverpool. They still got to think they've got a chance of, the, of of finishing first place in the Premier League. So they're going to go absolutely full strength. I'm hoping that that whatever was going on with Trent early on in the week, he is going to be available. Again, this is going to be another one of those ones where it's good. we've got to keep our ears to the walls about players like uh, Trent, for example, who, who was obviously absent in uh, in the midweek fixture, I suppose. Uh, but certainly, if he plays in this game, Wolves at home, Wolves have been conceding so many goals and so many chances recently, and they've not been looking particularly threatening in attack either but that's just kind of the story of Wolves this season overall that is perfect for players like Trent players like Robertson um, who I also have in my team so let's just throw up Robertson on the pitch as well uh, these two guys are just going to do so well in a game like this where there's going to be plenty of opportunities to get some crosses involved uh, take some shots on from range as well and and the clean sheet is I don't want to say locked on but it's going to be you know, a very good chance of a clean sheet particularly if uh, Liverpool can score a couple of goals Maybe they're going to look to kind of defend that lead and just hope that Man City slip up. Or maybe they're going to go for a, a lot of goals. I don't know what's going to happen in that game. It's going to be interesting for sure. Let me know what you think, Liverpool fans. But Trent and Robertson in this game, I'm definitely looking forward to. We've got Cancelo next, who has been disappointing recently. But that's mostly due to the fact that this... Uh, <laughs> This Man City defence is just not very good at the moment. They've, they've just got so many injuries and we've gone from having the best defence in the whole league to a defence that is because of these injuries that they've had and they're having to play makeshift players in makeshift roles. They're kind of just slowly kind of going down and down and down the rankings in terms of who is the best defence in the Premier League to a degree where, you know, is Cancelo even worth the 7.2 million anymore? I, I don't know that he is. I would genuinely consider selling him this game week if it meant that, you know, you could use the money, free up some money and use it for a better move. Or I, I think that could be a pretty aggressive, interesting transfer out. 
Probably not going to do it, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly something that is, I'll, I'd be okay with if I needed to get some money out of Cancelo. You know, I wanted to upgrade to a, a Chelsea defender, or for example, even though Chelsea apparently are going to be rotating in the last game week. Um, if I wanted to do that, for example, I think I'd be okay with doing it, but I probably am going to keep Cancelo, to be fair. Um, moving on into midfield, we've got Hyunmin Som. This is a player I'm very, very, very keen on uh, having in my FPL team against Norwich. That game is, is surely going to be an absolute cricket score. Everyone is predicting it to be that way. And Anyway, so yeah, Norwich obviously are, are relegated. They are going to be playing with a little bit of freedom, you would say. They don't have anything to lose after all. So they could just go into this game and just try and play some football. Unfortunately, what that often means when you're playing against Spurs is that Spurs will score a few goals against you and it's going to be the likes of Son chasing that golden boot possibly does he have a chance of getting the golden boot is Salah going to be available for game week 38 he might be but he might not be Son has got a genuine chance of getting the golden boot for this season and he is going to be bang on it I mean I don't know I keep I keep wondering this is Kane gonna give Son a penalty let Son take the penalty, if, if they get a penalty, of course, in the final day of the season, if that penalty means that Son can win the golden boot. I don't know. I don't know. Or is Kane just going to want it for himself and kind of trying to achieve those long-term goals of his own? You know, if it's a really important penalty as well, it might actually be crucial that, that Spurs score it. So, um, yeah, it kind of depends on the situation, I suppose. It's a really, really strange one. But Son, either way, I think is good for a couple of goals in this game. You know, I can see a, I can see a good haul from him, let's be honest. And we've got Mason Mount against Watford. Now, he was rested last game week, which I think is probably a good thing. Um, I know that, that, that Thomas Tuchel has said that he is going to be giving some opportunities to players who haven't played very recently um, in this final game. He's going to give some game time to some, some different players. But hopefully that means... That, that includes Mount. Mount's going to be included in that because he didn't play midweek. So I do expect massive rotation uh, among the Chelsea team. But because Mount didn't play midweek, because Mount is so important to Chelsea and, and you know a player who plays pretty much every single game, I do have some hope that he does play in this final game. It would be rare for Mount to miss two games in a row for Chelsea. I'll, I'll put it that way. So if he does play, I think this could be a really good opportunity for, for a cricket score for him, to be honest. So quite excited to see how that one plays out. But again, he's one of those players, if we kind of find out on the final day that he is rotated, he seems to be that, like one of those players who you do worry about a little bit of getting rotated. And um, if we want to find out about that, then maybe he's a player that I would consider transferring out. But I'd, I'd really love him to play against Watford and, and just do the business there. We've got Zaha against Manchester United at home. Oh, I know Manchester United haven't played in a, what seems like forever. I mean, they last played in game at 36, but it feels like so long ago. Um, but if you remember that far back, you'll remember that Manchester United are not exactly in the best shape defensively at the moment. And if you're backing anyone to score against them, it's Wilf Zaha. Surely he's got to be uh, involved in something there. Um, I mean, again, assuming that he plays Crystal Palace, a team with not much uh, to play for, although they might want a bit of a reaction after that Everton game, to be fair. Uh, but... Hopefully it's uh, it's going to be Zaha starting. He's off on penalties, of course, as well. And there's been talk about Zaha playing as a striker as well. So you know, I'd like to see I'd like to see that happen against Manchester United. I think that would be really really interesting to see for sure. Um, moving on to Saka at home against Everton. I mean, Everton are clear now. You know, they're safe from relegation. So Arsenal, in theory, should go there and and batter them? I don't know. Well, I don't know what the feeling that Everton's going to be like. Are they going to be rotating players now? Are they going to be giving players rest? I mean, these Everton players have just played four games in two weeks, so they're probably going to have some tired legs out there, and there might be a bit of rotation, particularly as they are now safe, which is, you know, fantastic for them, and congratulations to Everton fans, of course. So that kind of feels like it would be a good thing for Saka, a really good thing for Saka, um, but at the same time, you never really know. You never really know um, what's going to happen um, when you're Arsenal and when you're an Arsenal fan. To be honest, it's not been going fantastically recently, let's say that. Uh, we've got Kulisevsky here as well as the final player. I'm quite happy to already be doubled up on the Spurs attack. I do think Kulisevsky is going to play in this final game. I don't see why he wouldn't. You know, he had some illness issues before, but I think now that he's not ill anymore, hopefully, um, then he could just start against uh, Norwich and, you know, you expect... 
you know, Son, Kane and Kulisevsky to be the players getting the majority of the points, potentially maybe a Sessegnon or Emerson could get involved in some of the points as well. But certainly if there's, if there's you know, four or five goals in this game, and I would not be surprised if there was, you would say that Kulisevsky is on for a haul in this in this game week. So uh, yeah, I think that's a, a, a very strong player to have in your squad and for such a cheap value as well. He really is such a bargain. And going up front, I've got my two forwards. Um, so first of all, I've got Ings against Manchester City away. So he stands out to me immediately as a player who I'd quite like to replace, to be honest, because that's not really uh, it's not really a fixture that you really want. Although saying that, you never know. You never know. Uh, you know, a, a Gerard Aston Villa team with Ings and Coutinho fully rested back in for this Manchester City game. Um, obviously, Ings and Coutinho, Coutinho, the two players who previously played for Liverpool, Gerard, the former Liverpool player or legend, I suppose, um, playing against Manchester City, the final game of the season. Do you believe in magic, Liverpool fans? It could happen. It could happen. So, I don't know. Maybe there's a... Maybe as a differential, I guess. Because no, n most people are going to be too sane to, uh, to keep Ings in their team. But, I don't know. I, I feel like if someone's going to score in that game... Ings is probably the, the highest on the list for Aston Villa. And we kind of know what Manchester City have been like defensively recently. So, why not? Why not? Maybe I keep Ings. Maybe. But... You know, probably not. <laughs> uh, finally, we've got Richarlison against Arsenal away. Again, going back to what I was saying before, uh, Richarlison has played a lot of football recently. I know he has got the legs for it, but I wonder if this final game, they ever give him a rest or, you know, maybe it turns out to be a game kind of difficult. I mean, away against Arsenal, it's not an ideal fixture, but it's okay. So again, Richarlison is a, a, a player I consider keeping, but at the same time, you know, he's probably one of the prime targets. So, well, out of my team, you look at my team right here, Ings and Richarlison are the two very obvious players to sell in this team, aren't they, really? If I'm going to take a minus four, and I probably am going to take a minus four, um, potentially a minus eight, but probably not. It's probably going to be a minus four for me. Uh, I don't want to go too crazy after all. Uh, but anyway, on the bench, guys, before we do our transfers, we've got Ramsdale against Everton. Yeah, could play him. Uh, Burn against Burn Lee. Uh, that's a, not a bad first sub to have, but, you know, it could be... Could be a bit better. I, I think I would rather play with a very attacking formation as, you know, playing as many attackers as possible because obviously final day of the season, it often is the case where there is a lot of goals. So defenders are probably not the kind of players you want to have in your team. Although I do fully uh, back Newcastle to keep a clean sheet against Burnley. Uh, you know, it's just it just looks like a good matchup for, for Newcastle, to be honest. But, you know... I'd rather go for, the, for attackers for this final game of the season, uh, game week of the season. We've got Cash against Man City. No good. Uh, definitely not going to work. You know, I can, can criticise Man City's defence, but I can't criticise their attack. So, um, you know, I, I think Cash will concede goals. Uh, we've got Richardson there as well. Newcastle at home. You know, Richardson is not a first-team player. He's just there as a cheap uh, player to help me free up some cash. So, there we go, guys. That's my team. Um, I start in at 11. Let's make some transfers. And I thought about the most obvious transfers for me to make before I know any more information. And the two transfers that are so obvious for me to make would be to remove Ings and Richarlison and replace them with Harry Kane and Ivan Tony. So those are the two players I'm going to say for the purpose of this video. But I do want to keep making it very, very clear. This is far from final. You will, there will be no such thing as final until the deadline strikes. Until half past two UK time on Sunday, there is no final, right? Um, but... Um, yeah, this improves my team a lot. Uh, Kane, obviously, is a player I'd quite like to have against Norwich um, because, you know, triple up on Spurs, uh, Spurs attack in this game, it just seems like perfect. It just seems like the perfect thing to do. Like, that is just a matchup made in absolute heaven. Although I should warn you guys, I have heard some rumours that there may be some illness spreading through the Spurs camp and maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Harry Kane might be too ill to play against Norwich. But, I don't know for sure what's going on. There could be a late assessment. We'll probably find out before the deadline. But in an ideal world, I would have Harry Kane in this in this final game. I think he'll, you know, he's, he's just primed to score a lot of points in this game week. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Tony against this Leeds team. This is one I'm not so sure about. I mean, maybe I could go for an Eddie Nketiah instead. But Tony against um, a Leeds team that are just kind of not... <laughs> Very good. Um, you know, it looks like they could get relegated as well. Um, yeah, I just think, you know, Brentford going out of a bang. Tony scoring penalties. Leeds conceding penalties. It seems like, again, one of those... Get one of those matchups that could work out quite well. I think Tony, particularly, is a player who 
particularly in the last couple of months, has just popped up with these random 15-pointers, 17-pointers, scores like that, primarily due to scoring an obscene amount of penalties. So if that were to happen, and I would be depending on luck, but as always, you've got to make your own luck, that could be a, a a nice little turnaround, a nice little kind of player who kind of gives me a nice little boost there. And I think that would be quite good. And looking at this team, guys, this is a fantastic team. Um, I, I really like this 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 team. It, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm quite pleased with it, to be honest. And um, I think this is a, the, the kind of team that, that could score a lot of points on paper. But there we go. I said that last game week and the game week before. So in reality, let's see what happens. But hopefully we can finish off the season... Nicely, nicely, because the FPL gods have been a little bit mean to me the last couple of weeks. I kind of deserve it because of all of the great, uh, the great gifts that I've been given all season. But I'd like to finish off with a little green arrow, you know, just, just at least like a grey arrow. Just if I could stay the same rank, you know, but it's not going to happen because I'm going to go all in and we're going to do something crazy and we'll, we'll see what happens. There we go. That's the team. Um, captains, Son captain. Maybe that's a bit too boring. We'll see if I change my mind last minute on that one. But Son is the obvious captain. Um, I guess Kane is another pretty obvious one. So we just stick the armband on vice captain on Kane, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's do that. Both in the same game. Doesn't really matter. The game's not going to get called off or anything. And I imagine at least one of those two players is going to play. Hopefully both. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That's pretty much it, guys. That's the team. I think it looks great. We'll see what happens in reality. Um, but there we go. Thanks so much for watching, guys. <laughs> Right, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this end of the season, to be honest. I just want to look back at this season and what a fantastic year it's been for me. Um, but there's just this final two days of stress left until we get there. Guys, I really hope you guys are looking good for your transfers and stuff. Hopefully, you all achieve the final rank that you you are dreaming of. As long as you don't finish above me, I'm very, very happy. Uh, for all of you guys do as well as you like. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So, like I say, there will be plenty of content over the summer. We'll be doing some streams over the weekend as well. Well, so I hope to see you guys a little bit over the weekend as well. And then um, hopefully you guys are going to be joining me for the summer videos. But if not, if you're not watching the streams this weekend, if you're not watching um, uh, anything in the summer, you know, if you want to watch a little bit more content, you can watch my other videos that I've made this week. I've made loads. Um, and uh, yeah, if not, I will catch you guys next season, I suppose. There we go. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. Gaming 38, very much upon us now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.